Mike, obviously a couple of things went wrong early for you guys tonight. Maybe comment on what happened in that, the opening goal and then address another game and another red card. Um, the opening goal, within a minute, we came out, for whatever reason, a bit flat. And everything I say tonight, everything I say in this, I'm going to say this right now, uh, it all comes back to me. All right? So I don't want to keep saying that. It comes back to me, but it does. I'm the coach. I prepare the team. I spend a week training them. I thought this is one of our best weeks of training from preseason. Um, last week was an unbelievable week of tra training, and we, we had a good showing last week. Um, tonight, I'll say this, we, we, we donated two goals and a red card, and, and that's why we lost this game. We finished 11 v. 11. Uh, we win this game tonight. Uh, what character we showed, the players showed, down a man to score two goals. Uh, but against a young, energetic, talented passing team, for 75 minutes, uh, we're going to get exhausted, and we did. We shot ourselves in the foot, and it starts with me. But some promising things out there. Four red cards so far. Do you see that as part of a larger pattern, or do you think those are just kind of one-offs that happen to be in you know, the last four games? You're asking me to comment on the red cards. That's you trying to bait me into... Something here? No, not at all. But I am curious, do you see that as part of a larger issue, or do you think that they're just individual mistakes? One, two, three. I'm trying to remember the first red card. It was two in D.C. tonight. What was the other red card I'm missing? Portillo. Portillo. Listen, uh... <laughs> I want my guys to fight. I want my guys to stand up for themselves. I want my guys to compete. You're freaking baiting me into something. Not, 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 not on purpose, because I, I can't say what I want to say. I can't say what I want to say. Do, do I think all four red cards were justified? Do you think they were? Honestly, be honest with me. Maybe you do. Maybe you see it a different way I do. It feels like about half. Oh, there you, you know what? You read my mind, all right? I didn't say it, MLS. I didn't say it. And I will not say, I will not talk about referees anymore. Um, so I don't know how to answer that question. I, do I wish we didn't have four red cards? Absolutely. But 50%, uh, I agree with you. I agree with you. So listen, it happened. Uh, we just looked at the replay. I think it was a milk thing tonight. Uh, he, he really sold it. Um, I'll be very cautious in how I say this and very nice. The referee was behind the whole play. We just watched the replay. The, the referee was behind Demir. Didn't see, all he saw was Demir's head stand up. It was a very soft contact. I'm sure there's some sort of policy from the beginning of MLS that any head-to-head -head contact or any, which we've, I've, I've been hearing about for 20 years because I played in this league, and he decided I would, have, I, w I would have been more comfortable if he would have went like this and a better view upstairs, because he didn't see it at all. It was told in his ear. But at the end of the day, I, I, don't, I don't blame him. That's not an excuse. I don't blame him. But 50-50, I agree with you. Again, not trying to bait, but uh, anything you do with this team to, to discuss those, to try to? Yeah, don't get red cards. <laughs> Simple as that. How do you discuss that? You know, I mean, I played. There's, there's passion that goes into it. I've said it for 20 years now. We're not the players aren't robots, you know. Uh, uh, it's not a remote control game. I wish that it was. Maybe I'd have one of my assistant coaches sit upstairs with remote control. Anytime you see an aggravation going from a player or passion going from a player that wants to, you know, that 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 that, that someone's standing over and yelling at him, you could press the X button on the Xbox controller or the A button, and it's the calming button. You know, we don't have that. We have humans. You know, do I think that, that, that Dami meant to get up and, and headbutt him? No, not at all. If anybody knows Demir, he's, he's a, the calmest guy on our team. Do I think he got up and headbutted him? No, I don't. But that's just my opinion. Mike, in those, in those kinds of situations, is there anything that the guys can do to still be passionate but not kind of find themselves in those yeah, situations? Yeah, take yoga classes throughout the week, find their zen and work on those moments when the boiling gets up to here and then they could do this and think of Buddha or whatever the, whatever the Zen creature is or person is and, uh, and go there. I mean, I understand your question, but is there anything that they could do 
yes, control their emotions. But this is coming from a coach who has never controlled his emotions once in 43 years on this earth. So maybe it's my fault. Maybe my vibe to them, maybe my intensity. I, I don't know. I'm not faulting them. Um, it is what it is. Mike, in your first answer, you said that there were some positives tonight. I mean, Saverino looked <laughs> ready to go. Everton, Kyle ran their butts off. What, what were the things that stood out to you that you were happy with? The positives were to me is that going down a goal and a man, a man down scoring two goals and creating some you know, good stuff in transition. I thought that we were actually pretty good defensively man down for, for most of the game, and it just takes one moment, one bad cue, one bad step, one bad pass, and it's in the back of the net. So I'm always trying to look for positives. You know, the, the, the positive was is that we scored two goals, a man down, um, for 75 minutes. And we gave them two goals and a red card. Mike, I was just curious, did Demir, because he obviously popped up, he was, he was mad. Did he mention if he felt that the Dallas guy had stomped on him? I couldn't see it live and I didn't see replays. Did he mention anything to you about why he maybe got up as quickly as he did? Well, I'm, I'm assuming you're going to go down there to talk with the players? Well, yeah, after? but I don't know if he's going to be I'm gone sure or not. I'm sure he'll be there. He's, I'd be very surprised if he's not. Um, tell him to put his shorts on if he doesn't have them still and show, show you the inside of his leg, the five, five inches, five stud marks going down his leg. Okay. Now, if, am I excusing a red card if he did get up and headbutt him? I'm still not convinced that he did. But if he did, am I, not, not at all. I'm not excusing that. But it was pretty clear uh, that there was a stomp on his leg. I mean, uh, we have somebody, we have our assistant coaches sitting up in the booth nowadays because the, the league allows um, technology. So we have earpieces and we talk them up there. And the first thing he said was, you, you got stomped. Again, I'm not saying that's why, what provoked him. I'm not saying, I'm not excusing whatever happened afterwards. I'm just, you asked a question and asked them here about that. Before it got um, to that point, the red card, it seemed Dallas was making it difficult for you guys to kind of play up? Were they just pinching more toward the sidelines and creating less space for you guys to try and build out from? Yeah, listen, they, like I said, um, Lucci's a, a friend of mine, and, and I respect what he's doing there. Um, they, do, they did a great job in the beginning, you know, as far as limiting our opportunities to build out. Like you said, they're a very big sideline press team, um, and if you don't find those second and third outlets through the lines or switch in a point of attack, you get in trouble. And they did a very good job the first 10, 12 minutes, for sure. With these three uh, losses in a row, all of them you guys have finished without 11 guys. Um, do you kind of take comfort in the fact that it's that the losses kind of have to do with that a little bit and not just, like it's not a regular three-game losing streak? There's kind of like... It's a regular three-game losing streak. It doesn't matter how many players we have on the field. I understand what you're saying, but um, no, it doesn't give me comfort that we lost because we were down men at all. At all. Coach, was there any hesitancy to play Albert Ruznak after the minutes he got at the international level? And how'd you see him out there tonight? No, I mean, we had uh, three guys come back. Well, four if you count Julian uh, for the youth national team. Uh, come back. Albert came back on Monday. So we had Tuesday training, uh, Wednesday rest because we have a day off, Thursday, Friday training. No hesitation at all. And I thought that he. He did well. I mean, it was tough because we were under the gun the first 10, 12 minutes. Uh, and then four minutes later, we're down a man. So I thought they were very good moments. Corey came back uh, first day practice. Back to practice was Thursday. Uh, and he had a bit of a head and chest cold. So logic tells you after being away for that long. And you know, he, he's not someone that we felt comfortable starting, not because of any other reason but what I just said. And uh, Sam Johnson got back yesterday morning. Didn't train once with the team all week. Uh, so Albert was here for three training sessions and, and felt good and didn't feel anything from the jet lag. Um, and I thought he did well in, in key moments tonight. And that's why he came off towards the end as well, because we knew his travel was going to catch up with him all. 